Welcome back to USS Cod Submarine Memorial. I'm President Paul Ferrace, and today we're outside looking at what you've just seen, weld scars on our ballast tanks. You know, Cod is 80 plus years old, and of course she has an amazing history that's recorded in war patrols. But frankly, there's a lot of history that's evident just by uh, weld scars and such here on the boat. Um, as she was built at the Electric Boat Company in slip number four in 1943, the ballast tanks and, and much of her uh, uh, hull structure would have been pristine, clean, smooth as a baby's behind, and free of anything other than, thank you, free of anything except the actual uh, construction plate seams. Uh, but as uh, the COD uh, went through uh, her career in World War II and it was placed in mothballs and then brought out of mothballs, the Navy needed to access uh, things like piping and in this case, these holes you saw, the, uh, in, the air bottles that are in the uh, ballast tanks that store the highly compressed air that we use to surface. Now, the only convenient way to get in there and get bottles out for hydro testing and, and repa replacement would literally to cut through the steel plating. Take the bottles out, do whatever repairs you needed to do, put them back in, and then weld back. And of course, that they did a beautiful job, but that still left these telltale scars. So uh, if you look at photos of COD in service or any fleet submarine, during the war, you're not gonna see these. You're gonna see a very smooth uh, ballast tank surface. Uh, but boats uh, today that have been through um, mothball service uh, and refit, you're gonna see these, these weld scars throughout the boat, particularly on the ballast tanks, that are indications that she's been uh, through the works and, and been uh, uh, re rebuilt and modified. Uh, sort of like, um, uh, some older well-to-do women that will have a lot of cosmetic surgery. Now, Evan, if you can scan up here on our conning tower below the 224, if you can zoom in on that, you'll see some more weld scars. Um, now, that was a real challenge for the uh, ship fitters because right there, right through the middle of 224, you'll see a weld seam. Uh, from that weld seam down to about three feet below the superstructure is one and a half inches of armor plate. The Gato class boats were protected against incidental shell fire, small caliber shell fire and splinter uh, effect uh, by armor plate. And the, uh, the plate sits uh, about uh, eight uh, to 12 inches away from the actual pressure hull vessel, but between the two, uh, surfaces, the pressure hull and the armor plate, you have cable runs and piping runs. And to access that, of course, uh, during refits and mothball, you have to cut through that one and a half inches of armor plate. So that must have been a heck of a, a challenge for the ship fitters. But when they were done, they had to put the uh, plates back and, uh, and weld it and grind it pretty smooth. It's not perfectly smooth thankfully because it, it, it tells us uh, that that area was accessed and worked on. So again, if you look up there, now we have a setting sun and it's kind of a diffused light day. It may not be uh, easily visible, but uh, again, that's, uh, let's say cosmetic surgery that, uh, uh, or actually maybe orthopedic surgery. I know uh, a year and a half, two years ago, I went through a hip replacement and forever, uh, now uh, on, my, uh, my body has uh, uh, surgical scars uh, that indicate that I've been worked on. And the same here with our, our beloved cod. Uh, these, uh, these weld scars talk about uh, the, uh, the history and her maintenance. Just something we thought we'd share with you today. Uh, remember to hit the like, subscribe, the notification bell, and we've got a lot more uh, interesting comment lined up for you soon. Thank you.